so Turkey Tom, um, with his new best friend, I guess, some, someone he likes a lot. For whatever reason, Turkey Tom loves Destiny. Um, let me ask him. Let me ask him. Right now, actually. Give me a second. Where is he at? I have, a, I have a, an emergency communication line to Turkey Tom. Why? Why? Wait, I'm typing on the wrong key. Why do you love Destiny so much? Question mark. Just curious. Curious what may be going on. Anyways, he loves Destiny a lot. And he interviewed Destiny. After doing like a whole documentary on Destiny. A documentary, by the way, which I think was supposed to be flattering towards Destiny, but it made me hate him. I went over this already. It made me hate him because I realized that all of his politics are designed to enable the status quo because Destiny knows internally. I think he's actually literally cognitively aware. It's not even like a subconscious thing. He knows that in any other political system, any other time in the universe, he would be a carpet cleaner and he would not be allowed to fuck as many BPD uh, girls that he wants with millions of dollars in the bag. Any other establishment, he would be in a ditch or he would be in a field or he would be cleaning carpets for minimum wage. And he knows that, and he knows that, so he loves the status quo. He doesn't even care what it is. Pro-Israel, sure, whatever. As long as I can keep fucking BPD bitches and making the money. I will I will say literally whatever. He's kind of like, um, he's kind of like a CPC guy, or, is it CPC or, or, yeah, it's CPC. It's like a Chinese guy. It's like, ha-ha, oh, oh. the, the communist, glorious communist party pays my beers, and so I rubbed them so very much, ha oh, oh. Like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, fuck it. IDF. Greatest, greatest army that's ever lived. God bless them. Anyways, here's him talking about the Kiwi Farms. When you're, when you're thinking, like, imagine talking to a therapist. And you're like, I feel like everybody is, like, thinking about me and talking about me all the time. And it's really stressful. And the therapist is like, oh, no, no, no. Nobody thinks about you as much as you think they do. And I'm like, okay, well, here's, like, a 500-page thread on a random. This does not load. I have it on backup. It might load, though. Hold up. Is this the only one I don't have saved? I have like 80 million fucking videos on my thing right now. Website where yeah. everybody's talking about me constantly. Like it's it's really hard to <laughs> process and deal with all of that. And again, I keep stress. It's not. I don't know. A lot of people talk about me. It's kind of weird to think. It is a little bit weird to think that you have all these people who are like devoted to hating me and there's a people there are people who hate me so much they've hated me for a decade half a decade to a decade and they have spent hundreds of hours probably thousands of hours trying to inconvenience me and in one case they've spent over a hundred thousand dollars trying to inconvenience somebody next to me somebody who doesn't have any input on what i do uh, but they are adjacent to me in some way so fuck them However, I find this very easy to process. People hate me because I do things they don't like. Um, but they're faggots, so I don't care that they hate me. I, I don't know how Destiny is like... What does he say again? Let's replay this. Yeah, when you're, when you're thinking like... Imagine talking to a therapist and you're like, I feel like everybody is like thinking about me and talking about me all the time. And it's really stressful. And the therapist is like, oh, no, no, no. Nobody thinks about you as much as you think they do. And I'm like, okay, well, here's like a 500-page thread on a random website where yeah. everybody is talking about me constantly. Like, it's, it's really hard to... <laughs> process and deal with all of that and again i keep stress um it's well, people are talking about me it's like how do you deal <laughs> one more yeah time. when you're when you're thinking like imagine talking to a therapist and you're like i feel like everybody is like thinking about me and talking about me all the time and it's really stressful and the therapist but why that's a weird thing why do you care why do you care that people are talking about you maybe it's just something that my bug brain can't understand it's not everybody. It's just people that make fun of internet drama. People who make fun of your crusty leaks and stuff. And the, the dumb shit you say about Israel because it's so transparent about why you support the status quo. But why does that bother you? Don't you get paid? Don't you get paid money? Why do you need a therapist for that? I hate therapy. I've, I, um, I've been to therapy twice. Once as a child and once as an adult. And I took literally one session as an adult. And, um... I suppose it was useful. I've told this story before. Uh, when I was a child, I went because I had bad grades. So I went to a child th therapist who decided that I had AD, 
ADHD and ODD. As an adult, I went, and um, one time, and this was eight eight plus years ago, and I went because it was that time where I shut down the Kiwi Farms for like two weeks. And um, I don't know, it was kind of like a weird thing, because it's like, well, now what? So I went one time, and then he asked me the question, just on the first session, like, what do you want? What does it, you know, I remember now. What does an ideal you look like? I thought, hmm, that's a good question. What does an ideal me look like? And I decided um, an ideal me would be fit, sexy, skinny, uh, super funny, super smart, clever, witty. And most importantly, chat, most importantly, an ideal Joshua Connor Moon would have his Kiwi Farms. And so I decided that I did not need any more therapy. I had realized what I wanted, and I sold 100 Ethereum for $11 each, which is now worth over 100... How much is it right now? It's like $350,000. And I bought a plane ticket to Buffalo, New York, and I lived there for a year, and I brought my site back. That's a true story. That's a 100% true story. Um... And that's why the Kiwi Farms is still up. <laughs> so you guys are better be worth 100 Ethereum, is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Yeah, it, is like, it was like $7,500 at one point, which means it would be worth almost a million dollars if I had sold at the peak, the absolute peak. Isn't that cool? I can't think about that. That hurts me more than anything else in my entire life, knowing that I sold that, that cryptocurrency for a plane ticket. I had I had credit. Why did I just put it on a credit card? It's what they it's the it's finance one oh one chat. I went to college. I I went to college and I took finance. Um I should know you put everything on unsecured consumer debt and you keep the cryptocurrency. How did I fuck this up? How did I fuck this up, chat? Unbelievable. Um Sorry, I have to recombobulate myself. Thinking about that Ethereum makes me want to neck rope. It makes me want to jump out the fucking window. Don't think it, don't say it. Don't think it, don't say it. Don't think it, don't say it. The Ethereum man. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.